for several years, the Downtown Alliance has conducted original research asking people from Logan to St. George their perceptions of downtown Salt Lake City. Why do they like coming downtown? What are their concerns about coming downtown? Um, and then several years ago, we started working with our friends at CBRE to produce an economic benchmark report. And I want to thank uh, Jesse and Justin on our team for um, pulling this together. It's a great, great piece that has been very helpful for us in selling our city uh, to developers and investors and um, potential business owners. So thanks to our friends at CBRE for their partnership with this publication, and thanks to our team for putting it together. Um, so we're releasing two reports today. We're going to go through both of those briefly. And then we have some outstanding panelists. Will you go back one slide, just so I, they can, we can get the names? Uh, our panelists today are four uh, business women, four leaders in economic development who are helping to change the dynamics of our city. Um, and they're going to be able to react to the report and give you some additional um, feedback about the information that we're presenting today. So we have Laura Fritz, who is the director of the Department of Economic Development in Salt Lake City. Laura has been here for just over a year. Um, a great, great addition to our city, a great addition to Mayor Biskupski's team. So Laura, thanks for being here. We have Nadia Letty, who is the Vice President for Office for CBRE. Nadia, thanks for being here. Uh, Stephanie Beranek, Bern yeah. Beranek, um, who is an associate who will talk a little bit about retail development. And then our dear friend, um, Linda Wardell, who is a former chair of the Downtown Alliance. Linda is the general manager for City Creek Center um, with the Taubman Company. So Linda, thank you for being here as well. Just some quick details, 609 people surveyed. It is a statewide report. Uh, so this does measure people from Logan to St. George. And we do, it's, it's very scientific. It's based on the population level. So we make sure that the percentage of people surveyed in Salt Lake County is consistent with the number of people in Salt Lake County, et cetera. We've got some quick demographic slides that just show what the, what the survey looks like. Um, that, that, gender, age, next slide, Greg. Uh, so the next question we asked is um, visits to downtown by activity. Um, dining uh, for the past few years has continued to be the single biggest reason that people say they come downtown. Um, and this year we asked a new question about employment purposes. So we don't have any, any background information, but we actually saw a, a pretty big number of people who say they come downtown for employment purposes. That can be because they work downtown or because they come downtown for meetings. Um, but clearly downtown as an employment center is pretty important. And this is one that we will track over time moving forward. Um, again, dining, shopping, entertainment, all important. Religious activities um, has, is about 2% every year, 1.5 to 2%. Next slide. Uh, how interested you are you in the following activities? So the last slide said, how often do you come downtown? This one is, how interested are you? And again, dining, events, festivals, um, that leads the charge. That's why people like to come downtown. That's what differentiates downtown from maybe some other suburban communities. Um, shopping follows after that, followed by nightlife, and then working. So um, people may come downtown to work, but that's not necessarily where they're interested in coming downtown. They're really looking for unique experiences, dining experiences, shop shopping experiences that can only be found in the downtown area. Next slide. Um, so we saw above average interests uh, in the following categories. So this is, you can see the years are, are listed out here, 2017 through 2013. Um, pretty consistent information here on um, interest in these different areas. Once again, dining and events and festivals really lead the charge. And, and we'll talk about what that means when we look at um, entertainment and the importance of entertainment in an urban center um, as we move through this report and as we get into the next report. Next slide. Um, this is a new question that we asked this year, given the interest that people have in um, entertainment and in art and creativity in the downtown area. So this is the first year we've asked this question. Overall, how would you rate the level of artistic creativity and culture in downtown Salt Lake City? And we see um, people are generally fairly happy with it, but it's, it's kind of in the middle. Sevens was, was the big number. Seven and eight were the big numbers. Our goal of the alliance will be over the next few years really changing that and, and moving that into the 8, 9, 10 um, in that. So we, we hope that over the next few years we're able to start, as we've started to measure this, we hope that we'll have some activities and strategies that can help to change this and, and push uh, people to be thinking about downtown as a creative, entrepreneurial, and cultural center for, for the Intermountain region. Next slide. Um, and then we asked people, why did you, why did you rate it this way? Um, 
really the variety, the, the distinct, uh, diverse activities that are available downtown that are not available in other communities seems to be the driving factor. The fact that you can come downtown and have a multitude of experiences that are not available in a suburban community, really an important differentiation for downtown over other communities and something we'll be capitalizing on in our marketing and strategies moving forward. Um, others were a little bit less than that, but that, that idea of variety really, really resonated with people across the state. Next slide. Uh, why do you typically attend? Um, downtown events are not available in other places. That was the big takeaway for us, that there are things that you can get downtown that are not available in a suburban location or a rural location. Um, there are more things to do while I'm downtown, so people are often doing multiple things. They might go to dinner and go shopping at City Creek. They might go to jazz game and go to a club afterwards. They might go to a club and then dinner and another club. Um, but we see people coming downtown for a variety of activities, not just going to one spot, but actually doing multiple things when they come to the downtown area. Next slide. Uh, Motivations to visit downtown, again, art and entertainment led the, led the charge of why people want to come downtown. They want an experience. One thing we've noticed as a national trend um, is that the famed millennial generation is more interested in experiences than they are in possessions, that they're more interested in buying experiences and having, um, having unique experiences than they are necessarily in collecting material goods. And we're going to try to emphasize that. Um, so people will come to City Creek Center or we hope increasingly in the future to the gateway to buy things but the experience that they have there is actually what brings them there and what draws them there and what what differentiates from a suburban shopping location or even from online shopping next slide uh, do you disagree agree or disagree with the following statement I feel a sense of ownership with downtown Salt Lake City so back in 2013 44% said they saw, felt a sense of ownership with downtown Salt Lake City. We saw a slight spike in 2014, and it's been pretty consistent um, of 47% of strongly agree, 18 16 17%. Um, so, oh, sorry, somewhat agree has been in the 30s, and, and strongly agree has been 17. We're really going to work on changing this. This is something that we feel like we can um, try to influence and change and help people feel more of a sense of ownership and connection with downtown Salt Lake City. Uh, so this is really a, a takeaway for us that we need to focus on this because it's been consistent over the past several years um, and we want to change that dynamic. This is a, a, I wouldn't say a negative, but definitely something that we can work on and look towards in terms of solving. We asked people if they'd consider living downtown and this is fascinating to me. So you might look at this and be like, wow, 77, 75% don't want to live downtown. That seems like a big number. But that means that 25% do want to live downtown. So in the whole state of Utah, one out of four people want to live downtown. Right now we have about 10,000 people living downtown. One out of four Utahns is 750,000, if my math is right. So there's a huge potential market for us to go after people who would consider living downtown for a variety of reasons. And I think the next slide talks about why they might consider living downtown. Um, or actually what would change it. The biggest single factor that would make people want to live downtown more is cost. People see downtown as expensive, difficult to live, uh, to afford to live in downtown. Um, that's something that we want to address as we start thinking about affordable housing and strategies for people who might want to live in the downtown area. Next slide. Uh, this is always a, a really interesting slide. Um, Linda, you'll like this. So we asked people of, of different shopping destinations that they may go to, and City Creek Center continues to, to lead the pack, um, 2015, 16, and 17. Across the state, nearly half of po half the population, four out of six people, are, are going to City Creek Center um, in the past month. So that's a pretty, big, uh, a pretty big tell for us. We are a little bit concerned about the gateway. We've seen it go from 39% down to 28%. Part of that, I think, is that the gateway is in the midst of restructuring and making some significant changes. And we see that number probably changing and starting to bump back up over the next several years. Um, but this is really great news for City Creek Center in terms of why people are coming downtown and the experience that they're having and where they're choosing to shop and spend their money. Okay, so that was the, that's the attitudinal survey. Now we're going to just hit some of the highlights for the economic benchmark report. Um, really, these are for, for business folks. This is to close a deal, to start a business, 
um, or to just understand what's happening in the economy of this urban center, what's happening in downtown Salt Lake City. Just by the numbers, some really big, impressive numbers. There are about 76,000 employees in downtown Salt Lake City, $3.5 billion in wages. Um, I'm not going to read these all to you, but, uh, but this is an important point. I did want to point out, this is a number that seems higher than what I was anticipating, 14.8% in downtown office vacancy. We see that mostly in small spaces that are available for office vacancy. And we also see that largely because of the gateway, where the gateway has changed their dynamic and a lot of the spaces that were dedicated for retail shopping are now being devoted to office. Um, and we'll, we'll have our panelists talk a little bit about that as we move forward. Next slide. Um, these are what we consider to be the big strengths for downtown. Regional access, we're right in the center of the Intermountain West. We've got some great revitalization projects going on. Um, housing access and opportunity that we see a huge growth potential with more residential projects in the downtown area and an educated workforce. Some of the weaknesses that we see, affordability. Um, while we are one of, one of the less expensive places to live or do business in the United States, uh, we, we still have some work to do there, particularly with residential. Um, urban versus suburban mentalities. Um, we have a, a burden placed on downtown with a high concentration of homeless service providers, and that's something that has been in the news a lot. We really want to try to find some solutions for that. We think that long term some great solutions are in place. We're excited about the announcements that, that Salt Lake City and Salt Lake County have made over the past few days about strategies for downtown. We're going to continue to press on this point as well. Um, building regulations and fees, um, demolition ordinance, which the city is looking at, uh, have the potential to be um, difficult for development. Um, we're grateful that the city is continuing to refine their many regulations um, to help make it easier for, for businesses to succeed and for developers to do good, good development. And even though we saw some good progress with liquor laws in terms of future development, we're actually pleased about many of the liquor laws. We think that we still can make some major tweaks um, that can help to improve. Uh, business climate for restaurants and bars in our downtown area. Future opportunities. Um, we do think that uh, we need some additional infrastructure with tracks. We'd like to see an extension of the line on 400 South that would connect the 400 South tracks to the center station. Um, station Center is a huge opportunity. This is a project area that the RDA has been working on for some time. An announcement a couple years ago about plans for that neighborhood. Uh, as, the, as conversations about closing the road home um, and plans for that neighborhood continue to evolve, we think that this neighborhood really represents an incredible opportunity for downtown's development, especially on the west side. Um, the development of a sports and entertainment district, this is one that Laura actually brought to our attention, um, combining the renovations of the Vivint Smart Home Arena with some of the changes that are going on at the Gateway, have an opportunity to create a really compelling sports and entertainment district, and the city has been a great partner in thinking through those dynamics and what that might look like. Um, and again, homeless resources. Uh, we're working collectively to solve these problems, but it continues to be um, a challenge for us. Uh, and that's something that we've spent a lot of time and energy thinking about, and we'll continue to advocate for those. And finally, threats. Um, it's difficult because a lot of these are things we don't have a lot of control over as an organization. Air quality continues to be a threat for economic development. Um, outdoor industry, the decision for outdoor retailers to leave our community may not have a huge effect on downtown hotels because a 5,000 person convention will fill all the downtown hotels in the same way that outdoor retailer did. It probably has a bigger negative across the valley. Um, but we're concerned about the message that it sends about Utah being a welcoming state for the outdoor industry when they made a decision to leave our, our state. Rio Grande neighborhood, um, we've mentioned this in other ways in other slides. And finally, regional competition. Um, we're seeing a lot of growth in Lehigh, a lot of growth in other suburban market areas. We want to make sure that we're being conscientious and thoughtful about how do we position ourselves with our unique strengths to, to take advantage of uh, what downtown has to offer. Um, some quick stats about current and future development. Lots of new office space uh, contemplated, um, new hotel rooms. Um, really moving forward with uh, significant office space, and I'll let our panelists talk about this a little bit more. 
Um, this is a great slide, one that we're always really excited about. This shows the future projects that are in the works for downtown. This is always, I think, the most exciting slide of the report, um, and it goes through just the different projects that are contemplated right now. Some are further along than others, but um, the city of downtown, the city of Salt Lake and downtown Salt Lake City will look dramatically different five years from now than it looks today, just as it looked five years ago. It looked very different than it looks today. Um, and that's the sign of a healthy, strong community that we continue to grow. Um, the office market, I'll, I'll let our panelists talk a little bit more about this. Um, asking lease rate is $25, a 14.8% vacancy rate. We'll, we'll get into this a little bit more with our panelists. Um, lease activity by uh, industry. Um, law and legal still dominates, but we've seen a huge, huge rise in the number of tech companies moving to the downtown area. Most of these companies want small, funky, weird office spaces, and that's something that fortunately downtown has in abundance. Um, so a huge trend for us that we'll try to capitalize on with technology companies in the downtown area. Um, this is my favorite slide of the whole uh, presentation. This shows employment change um, in downtown, and if you look back in Back, well, it goes all the way to 1990, which I was just graduating from high school, so we don't need to, that's a long ways back. But if you just look at the change year over year, um, between 2007 and 2016, a 17% increase in the number of people working in the downtown area. That's a significant number of additional employees working downtown. And because downtown is a system, all of those new employees contribute to retail, to restaurants, to living downtown. Every time a new office opens downtown, every time a new building is built downtown, it changes the dynamic for everything else that we're thinking about and talking about. So that 17% to me is, is pretty exciting. Um, this is the, the category um, for retail sales, and you'll see eating and drinking dominates the retail sales in downtown Salt Lake City. Again, a huge, huge strength for us with food and beverage in our um, downtown area. Uh, clothing, shoes, and sales follows right after that. Um, department stores, uh, and then other retail sales is 2.9. But we really see a huge, huge growth in eating and drinking in the downtown area, and we want to continue to capitalize on that. Um, residential, um, Salt Lake City still is fairly affordable compared to other large metropolitan areas, and yet we still see that it's a challenge for people to afford rents in the downtown area. So uh, one thing that we're going to continue to focus on is affordability downtown. These are current uh, and future projects in the downtown area. You've seen the cranes downtown. We don't need to, to sell you on this story. There's been an enormous amount of residential development. We don't feel like the boom is over. We feel like it's continuing to move forward. There continues to be huge demand for people who want to live in the downtown area. Um, again, the question is really about affordability and how do we make it uh, so that people can live down here. Um, and I think this may be the last slide. I, we just want to put this up to brag a little bit. Um, transit scores measure how easy it is to use transit in a community. Uh, and so downtown scores, this is a um, walk uh, is a, the company that produces these scores. Downtown scores is 71, Salt Lake City generally is 43, Ogden is 49, so beating Salt Lake a little bit, Lehigh is 20. So you hear about the congestion in Lehigh, you hear about some of the challenges that are faced by people going to Lehigh. Um, this really underscores, I think, one of the key advantages that downtown has as a transit-rich environment, a transit-rich destination. So I think that's the last slide. Is that correct, Greg? Okay. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists just to comment on this and provide some basic information, and then we'll turn it over to you for uh, your feedback and your questions. So please, jump right in. Thanks, Jason. Um, I think that it's no surprise that um, top of the list in a lot of these charts, um, as far as retail sales is concerned, is uh, food and entertainment. I think that a national trend that we're experiencing with consumers is um, uh, simply in that direction. I think that that is in response to e-commerce. So I think that consumers, in order to get them off the couch, out of the house, they're looking for an experience. Um, I think that that was something that Jason touched on as well several times. They want placemaking. They want a sense of experience. They want entertainment. And so they're seeking those destinations. Um, I think that that's the reason why we've seen 22 new restaurant openings um, in Salt Lake City in the last 12 months. Um, and I also think that the re-envisioning and redevelopment of um, the gateway is spot on. Uh, we don't have 
a sports and entertainment destination in downtown Salt Lake currently. Um, that's definitely a hole that I think needs to be filled. And I believe with the $100 million investment that Vestar is putting into the Gateway, we will really see that. And I believe that, you know, that will be a thriving epicenter for Salt Lake County, which is very exciting. Um, I think in general, we're going to continue to see a trend in unique experience-based retail. So I think that another trend that's, um, that we're experiencing in downtown Salt Lake are um, these little thriving sort of neighborhood nodes of retail that are popping up. Um, places like Pierpont Avenue, Regent Street, um, I think Edison Street in the next couple of years will be another place to watch. Uh, that gives the consumer an opportunity to um, to purchase items to eat at restaurants that you know they they can't get anywhere else. Um, so again, I think that it's that experience driven um, consumer opportunity that people are really looking for. No, oh, pass it along. <laughs> Um, so I work on the office side of things, and we love to hear when the retail is booming because it obviously helps tenants wanting to come downtown. Um, you know, as you mentioned with mass transit, being able to come downtown, there's not a lot of parking. It's usually around two per thousand. So people depend on being able to come down here, use mass transit, have um, various access to retail. So for us on the office side, that's a huge benefit and we like to see that grow and it's been a good thing for us from a marketing standpoint. Um, it is interesting to note, and Jason, you kind of touched on lease rates, definitely on the rise in the downtown. I mean, you saw with the completion of 111 Main, definitely on the higher end of the rates in the downtown market. We're also seeing some buildings getting repurposed repur like the Gateway. They are also, looking to achieve lease rates very similar to 111 Main. And we are seeing tenants come into the market that are willing to pay for it, as witnessed by the growth that they've seen and the tenants moving into those properties. Station 41 is really just fairly new, um, but really creating an opportunity for people to have that creative uh, somewhat warehouse space in the downtown area. I mean, we're really seeing market-wide tenants taking a flight to quality. Um, so you're seeing people come out of Class B or C space and looking for that A space. Um, you know, and that's bringing on some new developments that are planned in the marketplace. Um, from an office perspective, we have hardware station, which is something that is going to be by the Fourth West Departments and the hardware station multifamily. And that's something that's really focused on being in a transit hub and also being close access to retail. Um, design is something that's very interesting. The Patronelli Group that's also looking at 650 Main, which is going to be a two-tower development. Um, they, the design of these properties is very high-end. It's floor-to-ceiling glass. It's what tenants are looking for. Larger floor plates going to a smaller floor plate to attract the tech tenant as well as the professional services that we're seeing a good mix of in the downtown. Um, you know, overall, the vacancy rate of 14.8, we don't worry about that. Um, it's a healthy vacancy rate. We don't see a lot of new construction coming online for this year, and we believe that, that we don't see that uh, vacancy rate increasing by any means in the downtown area. So still a good influx, but we would like to see, um, as Laura and I were talking about earlier, some larger blocks of space come into the downtown area because in some ways that can be a hindrance of groups being able to grow. So we're hoping to see that expand. Good morning. Um, what I would like to talk about is the survey that we recently completed with the Department of Economic Development in partnership with EDC Utah, the Chamber, and the Downtown Alliance. The survey was about 800 businesses responded, and it absolutely confirmed everything in the Downtown Alliance report. It told us that companies would love to be downtown. The cost of space has increased a little bit, which is good news because it does allow for new development to occur. However, there aren't a lot of spaces available. In fact, our office lost three fairly large opportunities to suburban communities because we couldn't supply the product in time. It takes 18 to 24 months to build a new office building. Most companies, unfortunately, don't think that far in advance. It's usually about a year. So we're really trying to encourage our local development community to build buildings um, because we know we can fill them 
it's the old adage, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> so um, the other thing that we learned from our survey was that workforce is going to continue to be a challenge. We're very fortunate in Salt Lake City that our unemployment rate is relatively low. However, we want to make sure that we're providing skill opportunity, that we're helping those that are underemployed find new skill opportunity. So within the Department of Economic Development, we're going to be adding a workforce development position this year to help with our employers understand the different tools that may be available to them so we can continue to have our workforce thrive in our community. Last but not least, we heard within our survey that arts and entertainment are the number one thing that will help a company decide whether or not they're gonna stay in the city and more importantly, expand here. That blew our minds because the first thing they tell you in Economic Development 101, do not talk about your quality of life because you know what? Every city is gonna talk about what a great quality of life they have. So to actually hear from our companies that yeah, we want to hear more about the arts and entertainment was remarkable to us. So shameless plug, tomorrow night starts Twilight, which is um, held by the Arts Council, which is a division of the Department of Economic Development. We hope that you'll come down and see the great quality of life that we have. In addition, the RDA, of course, has opened the new Eccles Theater, and we think that that has made, we've heard a number of anecdotal stories that it's really made an impact on downtown, that our stores and restaurants see an uptick on the nights that the shows are happening at the Eccles. So we are excited about our arts and culture in our downtown, and we're looking forward to seeing that continue to grow. Good morning, everyone. I think it's gonna be my job today to tell you um, a few anecdotes that'll reinforce um, all of these great points that have already been made today. Um, so when the Eccles Theater opened um, and 111 Main opened, I was standing um, in the lobby of those beautiful buildings and a very smart person, it was not Jason Mathis, um, said, I know, I said smart person and everyone immediately looked at you, so I had to say it was not Jason Mathis, although usually when I say smart person for the record, I do mean Jason Mathis. But a very smart person said to me, um, you know, this, um, this development, the Eccles Theater and 111 Main, is going to be the best Christmas present that City Creek Center ever receives. And I thought, you know, um, that, that could be true. And, and we'd spent a lot of time planning for the impact of the Eccles Theater and 111 Main. But I immediately started to think, you know, oh, wow, have we underthought this? And, you know, what is the impact going to be? And what is it going to be like? And, you know, we really did have um, an amazing holiday season. And, you know, the holiday season is, has been very kind to City Creek Center, but, you know, it was the biggest holiday season, particularly from a traffic standpoint that we had seen. And it was the impact of the Eccles Theater and the 111 Main Tower. We've seen um, traffic in a new and different way because of the Eccles Theater and 111 Main. And to see the impact um, of the 111 Main Tower, all you have to do is have lunch on the Brio patio or the Cheesecake Factory patio and just watch the flood of people who are walking up, you know, our portion of Regent Street and watch them coming in, you know, in a new way that we've never seen before or come to the center on a night that there's an Eccles Theater performance. And, you know, we had thought that... Um, we were going to fill up our sit-down restaurants on the night that there were Eccles Theater performances, and certainly that is happening, but you know, this is Utah, so people are not ashamed to have a Chick-fil-A or a Red Iguana or a McDonald's on the night that they're attending um, an Eccles Theater performance, and so, um, you know, it really has had an impact center-wide, um, and we are delighted by that. Um, so the Eccles Theater is big, there are a lot of shows, and people are certainly turning out for that, and you know, we, we are really thrilled by that. What we like to say is that people are starting their downtown experiences at City Creek Center, and that's not just true for the Eccles Theater, but it's true for many of the other venues downtown as well, whether it's something at Gallivan Center, whether it's the Capitol Theater, Bravenel Hall, whether it's Rose Wagner, if it's something at the Vivint Smart Home smart home arena, if it's a jazz game, um, you know, really people are using City Creek Center as a place to start their downtown experience, and we're very excited about that. I think after five and a half years, people really have City Creek dialed in, they know where to park, they know how to navigate the center, and they know where they're going downtown. 
and certainly we have an advantage being located at the heart of the cultural core and it is a very important part of you know what people love about their downtown and I'm surprised that people aren't identifying more with ownership but I do think that's going to come you know in time for us. Um, a couple of other things that I think it's important to note about what is happening with our downtown is really um, sort of the impact that we're seeing on the different audiences who are using City Creek Center. Of course, we have a robust um, local um, and loyal shopper, and we are grateful for that. Um, the other thing that we really see is because we have curated um, a group of retailers who are unique, um, who can only be found at City Creek Center. We have um, really, we are the premier shopping destination for the Intermountain West. And so we have people from Idaho, Wyoming, Western Colorado, who are making two or three trips a year to Salt Lake City to shop at City Creek Center. And that's good um, you know, for Salt Lake City. Certainly it's good for City Creek Center as well. But we're putting people into the market specifically for the reason of coming you know, to our city. And um, that's good for our economy. Um, so that's good for tourism. And there are several other kinds of tourism that um, we're experiencing that are positive for our local economy. Right now, it's national park season. And we're delighted to have the national park visitors. Um, if you come into City Creek Center um, today, you'll see that we're very busy. Yesterday, I walked out, and we had hundreds of Chinese school children there. And at first, I was really puzzled about what was going on. And then I remembered, oh, yes, it's national park season. And these are school children who are, you know, Salt Lake City is a gateway city to the national parks. And so we're part of their tour. And, you know, they're here to eat lunch with us and shop for a little while. And then they'll be back on their bus and headed to you know, another Utah destination, National Park certainly is on their um, itinerary, and so those dollars are very valuable to us. Um, so National Park's very big. Of course, we're getting ski tourists um, as well. It was a very good ski season. Um, lots of snow this year, and so ski tourists lasted a little longer than usual. Um, the other thing we're seeing, of course, are our convention visitors. Jason talked a little bit about that. Um, conventions, of course, we all think about the convention center, but we shouldn't undervalue the meetings that are happening at our local hotels as well. Some of those small meetings are very valuable for us. You know, it can be a group of um, dental assistants or a group of podiatrists or I'm um, hung up on medical today, but there are all kinds of meetings that are happening um, in these local hotels that are very valuable to our economy as well. They're putting people into our markets. And so, you know, those, um, those types of visitors are, are certainly um, important for us. Um, I'll just touch on e-commerce briefly, and then I'm happy to take more questions about it. You know, people are, are talking about, I'm sure you've all done stories about um, the mall is dying. Um, and there may be malls that are dying. But, you know, it's, um, it's important for us um, as um, mall operators to be nimble and strategic. And part of that is curating a collection of retail that is experiential, um, that will keep people coming into the center, um, that, you know, that will be something interesting and different and that you can only find at City Creek Center. Um, and I think um, there are a couple of, of interesting stories that I can tell you. One is um, we have a store at City Creek Center called Fabletics that some of you may have seen. That's the e-commerce brand. Um, before they opened a handful of stores, they were previously available only online. It's the brand um, that's partially owned by Kate Hudson. Some of you may know that. Um, and, you know, previously they were a club, so in order to shop with them, you had to join their club. They've done a very good job of engaging their club members um, in their store. And so, you know, part of that story is that it's a social experience to be in their store now. You know, they're engaging their members. So think of retail as a social experience. People still want to come and, and be recognized and acknowledged in shopping. And then I think the other piece is, you know, a place of belonging and having merchandise that's for me and still being able to engage online. And then one other brand I think that we have that's very interesting now is um, a store called Albion. And what you all may love about them is that they're a Utah brand. They're owned by Liz and Dave Findley. They um, design and manufacture all of their own products, um, which I think in this day and age is very special and, and very unique. Um, they opened their first store at City Creek with us when we grand opened. And they are now um, so successful that they're in their third store 
Um, it's twice as large as their last store. We're very um, proud of that. And Dave and Liz have been um, forthcoming in saying that their sales have grown 200% year over year, which is why they've needed this large store. But the thing that's interesting um, with them when you talk about e-commerce is that they have 252,000 Instagram followers. I checked this morning to make sure I had the number right. And so when you have a brand that has 252,000 Instagram followers and you're engaging with them in that way, that's like they have their own media channel. You know, it's like having one of you in the media supporting them on a daily basis. And so I think having, you know, a, a store in City Creek that has that kind of power in a, a social media channel is, um, is where it's at today. And so we really rely on working with, you know, a retailer like Albion to be able to draw our customers in. We host events with them. We do all sorts of interesting things to be able to engage um, with a brand that, that has that kind of power.